Okay, keep going. Episode 3. Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, the killer. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. Ransom. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Uh. Where the hell are we going? This is the entrance? It gets better! A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Okay. Why the hell is there a big boat blocking the road? Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Okay. Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake, I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. Hey, this is really good! Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, hey Al? Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? 
What? Never drink suspicious liquids. It's coming for you. Hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Switch. <clears throat> I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. What? She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do. About the complex incantation I'm attempting. About this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Rose took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Not something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. Um, Barry was out of it. Barry? He was way too heavy to carry. What do you want me to do? You're right. I deserve more money. I'm so handsome. Uh huh. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry uh. into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Of course, they took everything. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Mm-hmm. No way to go here. Hmm. Maybe something here. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you. The weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I ain't the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Yeah, yeah, uh, I had a, uh, you know, uh, argument with Danny, you know, Danny, and... Uh, then I get in trouble with the law, you know, and, um, I'm just, well... I 
or something like that, Walt. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, they let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man. And there's something in the air tonight, man. Something in the uh, air tonight. I was just looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I, I think I'm gonna... <coughs> well, Walt, uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? What? Huh? Oh, there's something in the air tonight. Oh Lord. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Yeah, I'm not gonna be flagged for that because I'm a bad singer. And this game does not reward exploration, huh? Hey, Mr. Randolph. What's up? Oh, you're gonna get it now. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Hemingway. Yeah, at least wait until, until he's clear. I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Give it up, Mr. Wake. Come on. Take it easy, Don't let him get away. Move it, move it, move it. Also, I don't have a flashlight. What, we've got air support? There he is! Freeze! Okay, men, keep your eyes peeled, he's gonna try to make it through here! Oh, damn, damn. it. Flow's no good. Ow! I'm running in the same direction. He's gone! Come on, guys! We need to head him off! For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Oh boy. Why is everyone in the mother trying to kill me? Damn!
Search the area. Yeah, you already said that. Stay sharp. This way. This way. The hell? What am I missing? It's got Andy! It's got Andy! Oh, come on! This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Checkpoint. Oh, hi. You on the ground. Hold it right there. There's nowhere to run. Freeze! I can run over there. Yeah, explain how I'm controlling the crows. Look, toggle zoom. Notifications. Better get them here quickly. The uh, Fed's gonna want to interview Wheeler over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Mulligan out. What do we have here? I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. Hmm. That's the broadcast tower. Something's over there. Okay, just need to get down there. <clears throat> and I don't have a weapon. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Um, Unnatural shadows clung to what? the gate. 
The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through with it. Ow. Okay, okay. Destroy the gate. It's a darkness possessed gate. Oh, look. Nargon projector. Give me something. Page. The old generator conked out. Uh, I'd have to see if I could fix it and try again. Seriously? A timed event? Okay, let's get this party started. It was a bit annoying, but it's probably there to teach me a new mechanic. use it in the future. Okay. Evil gate. Okay. Now we're in some kind of business. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. Team one, come in. Over. No shotgun? Team one, this is Sheriff Breaker. Report. Over. What's the shotgun? Team two, come in. I need a report. Over. Come on, guys. Talk to me. Come in, please. Over. Um I forgot how to throw grenades. Throw. Let's see how you li guys like this. Nothing. Yeah, no points for exploration. Ow. Ow. Light, get me to the light. And here's another call. 
You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it doesn't it's sound serious. like a party. Well, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. It sounds serious. Come on. Ow. Okay, I've got them. Touched by the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true. She would be Alan Wake's muse. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Mm. Deep down inside, she was screaming in terror. Right. No. Here they come. Nice. Concentrated light burst. Anything? There we go. There we go, all of them. Shit. He's a tougher one. It's okay, we can handle you too. Um, oh, okay. Yay, light. I hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. it's Lorna Miles. Oh, hello, Lorna. What do you have for us? Must grab Thomas. Door, Pat. Come on in, Mr. Wake. 
Ah, oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. No way to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter Judas with you? Please. There's a civilian in there. <laughs> Judas Priest. <laughs> I like it, Judas Priest. I'll get you yet, even if it kills me, you hear me? What's you the deal with you? Lovecraft? I had fallen off so many cliffs it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. It's a good thing you didn't write a book named The Electric Chair or something. Okay, flowers are also good. Oh boy. Just let me get this generator started. Oh, revolver. Okay. Anything else? Ow. Damn it. Reach the train depot. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Mm-hmm. The darkness controls the Taken. Yay, shotgun. Can you stop manifesting out of thin air? Where's my lights? I moved. What? God damn it! Get back! Get back! Sheesh! And I'm out of special ammo.
and I sh probably should have used that. Anything I missed? Well, well. Come on. The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. Come get me. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. Mm -hmm. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge. Oh, the scotch. Rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Who's calling me? Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Really? Floating objects. That's something, right? Okay, that's good. Gonna need that next time, huh? Oh. 
So something else. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Okay. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Just the train. Nothing to worry about. It's just the train. Just the train. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. God damn it. Ah, ah, ah. Gee. Judas Priest. Some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. that was pursuing me was growing stronger and it was taking over everything in its path. Thank you, bye bye. God damn it. How? Oh my god. Come on. <sighs> Some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. that was pursuing me was growing stronger and it was taking over everything in its path. Jesus. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. 
It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story, certainly not the protagonist. Mm -hmm. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but a heavy duty the flashlight. Could possess anything, and it was getting closer. Heavy duty flashlight. Tell me there's something in there. Good. Open. Says me. Did you call 911? Open up, goddammit. Get you with my heavy duty flashlight. In light, you can hurt them. Yeah, figure that one out. Well, good. Batteries. EV. We take the facts of our existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful until tonight. Makes me want to watch Erie, Indiana again. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durlis. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. What? What? Mmm. Mmm. Please, Nixie Perka, the dweller in flesh. Your body shall host a thousand young, and all shall be glory. 
Such quests always bear fruit in night springs. Okay. Oh, wait. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's no going back. That looks like a boss arena. <laughs> yeah, he's done with the, the bulldozer. Come on! Don't quit out on me now. Ow! Ow! Jeebus! Ah! Oh, damn it! Judas Priest. Yeah, get him. Get him. Nice. Get me the hell out of here. Thank you. Car. I had never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine.
Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. Where are all my weapons? Um, what was that? Also, can I just... Did you arrive there? Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. Uh huh. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. Yeah, especially with the disappearing background. Definitely going insane if the background scenery just disappears. Please let me find something good here. Not order. <laughs> no, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now. Peeved? Some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. Peeved? And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Wait, do I know the music? No. I'm just so freaking peeved. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> You got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Yeah. Or childish, even? There's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but... What you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but 
Let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she... I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work. I don't know, but... Well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone. Not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I, I'm not living in the past. But I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. <laughs> Well, it's not, like, fitting exactly. It's like a Venn diagram. You find someone, and you find how they complete you enough, I think, so the good outweighs the bad. And you want it enough, I guess. That does not look like a good place to go rummaging around in. But we're protagonist. Hero protagonist. Stop. Ah. For Mott, spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look at the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. Asshole. Judas, man. I was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Something smells, but I'm not cooking. Visitor parking. Sure. I'm visiting and I'm parking. Well, look at David Fels. The mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The scenes were rich, but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. I get it. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. It's not a good one. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. And many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. Is this the main building? Is that the main building?
I didn't want to go outside. The cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. You look like three layers. I tortured the kidnapper to get Alice back, or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Maybe you got the wrong building? I mean, there's got to be a reason. Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Wait, Hello? if I can't go Hello? through that door... Uh, I'm gonna kill him! Where am I supposed I to go? I to get to Mirror Peak. Where exactly? Ah! It was close. Maybe closer than ever before. Can I leave, please? Oh, is this the way I'm going? Ow! The hell was that? Give me some power. Okay, no don't. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Okay, okay. Are we good? I don't think so. God! Judas Priest!
are we done now? Oh, flashbangs are good. Uh, it's also very convenient. Nope, nope, nope. Hurry, hurry. Why the hell isn't there a Glock? Or a zigzag or somewhere near here. Not the whole thing. Yeah, I need to go up. No, no, come on. those things. What the hell? How the hell do I fight darkness? The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. <laughs> avoid electrocution. Yeah, let's avoid electrocution. Why isn't the light still on? Will it still run? First time actually thinking, let's turn off the power! things at me
Okay, I'm out of here. Dear God. Stop it. What the hell, man? Okay, let's try and just get there quickly. Oof, okay. There's no one in the dark. Yep. Figure that one out too. Where's that light coming from? Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. Oh, 
what, what? Ah! Are you seriously attacking me with a tree? Could you not do that? Alright. That's some moonlight, right? There was no way the flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. But where are they from? Ah! That stupid thing. Stupid dark mine. I have to check if there's anything over here. Hi. Still don't quite know what's the deal with the guy who wants the manuscript. Why? I mean, I think I get the darkness thing. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well. I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Excuse you? As in, what the hell? This seems like an awfully bad idea.
Hi. Okay, didn't mean to do that. What, 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 what? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. That's all. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Switch to pump action shotgun? Hell yes! Don't break out on me now. Very good. Wait, this is the way? So let's try the other way. Doing good so far. Okay, I'm almost out. Um, 
Open? No? Yeah, light usually isn't my problem. Ammo is my problem. Okay. The dark presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? Needs a muse, right? The graveyard shift may cause cancer. <laughs> what? What? I can wait for you. Four shotgun shells. said need ammo not batteries the place was dead a ghost town had been for decades maybe a century the place was dead literally Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! No place where I can find some ammo. Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight, something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. 
Even now, I was angry at myself, angry at Alice, angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. Yeah, just going with the flow. That was great. That was just great. Damn, you're seriously out of shape, man. My dog's running around and I have no idea why. Not batteries, ammo! Give me some kind of ammunition. Frack. No, back, back, back. The fridge. The fridge is attacking me. Oh, come on. Just die already. I'm gonna win in the end, because you're dumb. Ow. What was that? Keys. 
Keys for what? Ha! Did not forget you. Thank you. Anything outside of riding is a struggle. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet, and a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake, using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of a lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things from my story. They ring true. They fit. Switch to the hunting rifle. I have 11... I have 19 ammo for the shotgun. And I have a lot... And I have less, so... Wait, but the hunting rifle is stronger, isn't it? I think it is. Maybe if I aim, aim better, it'll be... Judas Priest. The kidnapper had sent me a text. The message was full of spelling errors and insults. <laughs> it was telling me to hurry up. Yay! Ammo! Okay, reload this thing, but still keep it. As a bonus. Because it's my area of effect. Birds. Come at me. Who wants to go first? Okay, I'm going. Okay, let's just go. Birds. Okay. Come on, man. Come on. Birds. Burn. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's one more. Screw you, birds! Silver mine? So this was a coal mine. Hmm? Yeah, I was just imagining. Tunnels go to Cauldron Lake. Alice? Without warning, the headache stabbed at my brain. The hell was that? Don't shout back. Don't yell back. Alice? 